AI is starting to get really intelligent. Two, intelligent. But I think you can take advantage of this. I've been learning how to use these AI image generating systems and the results are truly amazing. And today I'm gonna to be showing you the top ways that you can use this technology in your own videos, starting right now. now. Stop, stop, I, look, I promise this is gonna be a fun, interesting video, but we've gotta start with some basics. What actually is this? There's a lot of AI image generating systems out there, but I'm gonna be using the two most well-known, Dolly 2 and Mid Journey. These are artificial intelligence programs that create images from textual descriptions. Now, I don't care about the technical stuff as much as I care about the creative, so maybe the best way to describe this would be a photo generation tool based on prompts. And here's the thing, these are scary good. Let me give you an example. This is my dog Boomer, and he's a Bernese mountain dog. And I wanted to see what he looks like playing the character of John Wick. I mean, tell me that's not exactly what I was asking for. The images are ridiculously amazing, but I think the real reason this is taking off is because the average person can use it. You don't need to speak some coded language. You can just sort of vomit out your thoughts and start to get images, sort of like this. A lone samurai in red armor in the style of Van Gogh. And it totally gets what I'm looking for. It doesn't even matter if it's simple things like panda muffin or more complex ideas like an octopus wearing a top hat dancing around a planet in space surrounded by the beauty of the cosmos. I think you get the idea. This whole system is amazing, but it still might leave you wondering, okay, what purpose would I actually have to insert into my video a photo of what Joe Rogan would look like if he was a character in a Studio Ghibli film? By the way, in case you are wondering, this is what that looks like. But what can I actually use this for? Well, I'm gonna be sharing with you my five personal favorites, starting with the more boring kind of whatever stuff and then moving to the, oh my goodness, you can actually do that kind of stuff. So make sure to stay to the very end. So if you're excited to learn, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and let's start it off with number one, inspiration and concept art. Okay, stop. I know I can already hear you screaming at me right now. Unacceptable! Saying things like no sh of course you can use this for concept art. That's like the poster child of what you can use it for. Let's change the mood in here a little bit. Okay, instead of going into depth with it, let me just give you some ways that you can tailor this to your advantage. First thing, actually do use this for concept art. If you're like me, you've made countless different films at different budget levels, and you've never done storyboarding for any of them. Because if you are like me, then you can't draw, you can't paint, and you can't pay somebody to do it the right way. So just do me a favor and take advantage of this in the following ways. Either use it to solidify your look or use it to explore new ideas. If I was to make a movie that I would describe as an ethereal space adventure, I wouldn't even know where to start. But if I literally just type that in, I get this as a result. Bottom line, this is a great tool for helping you to generate ideas if you don't know where to start. But refining your ideas is also pretty simple. Let's say you created a picture by typing in a young man in the foreground with a backpack leaving a city to go on a great adventure. Type in aspect ratio 16 by nine and there you go. But let's say it kind of gets close but it's not quite catching the feel of what you wanted to go for. You're looking for something a little bit more futuristic and cyberpunk. So let's see what happens if you just do the exact same prompt and then type in at the end cyberpunk. Now either use that for yourself to keep in mind when you're going forwards or send it to somebody else in a different department and now you both are on the same page with what exactly you're going for. But I know we haven't even touched the editing timeline yet and we're not using this to create some crazy, amazing, awesome video. So next up, I promise you, we're actually gonna be using this on the timeline. Composite stuff into your shots. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Look, this could go a bunch of different directions, but let's start simple. You've got something like a static shot of something happening and you don't like what's on the walls. So add something. Place down an image that could work as a painting in and of itself and adjust the lighting and levels and blur it to make it look realistic. Fun fact, if a piece of art actually ends up in the final draft of your film presented to an audience, then you actually have to have the artist's permission in order to use it. So that sucks to know that after you've shot everything. So this is a great option to have in the back pocket if you need to cover over art that you didn't know you even needed the rights to. But it doesn't even have to just be art. You can take something like a concrete wall and composite in a Banksy-like image that you generated from Midjourney. And if you have even a basic knowledge of 3D tracking, you can easily place this onto a moving wall. Add it in as a little Easter egg or as something that's actually central to the plot of your video. But maybe you're thinking, okay, that's still too basic. How about this? Do you want tattoos? What? That's right, you can actually create tattoo styled art, which I personally think that Mid Journey is phenomenal at. Just make sure it's black and white, and then you can track your subject with the built in trackers and programs like After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, or HitFilm. Change the blending mode so you get rid of the background. Now you've added a little bit of character to your character. 
and you can change it super easily after the fact by just changing the source file. But you know what's even an easier use case? Putting your art into a template by Motion Array to showcase it in the best possible light making it look amazing and dynamic and making it truly feel alive. All I have to do is go to the image section and drag and drop it in and boom, all the work is done for me. And it looks fantastic. And I'll link in the description down below to some of my personal favorite art display templates. But let's get a little bit more advanced and you've actually already seen the next use case because guess what? In this shot, I actually didn't have access to a warehouse where I could film something that looks like it would be similar to this concrete wall warehouse type vibe. So I just created one in AI and then filmed myself on a green screen and placed the AI image behind me to composite myself in. But okay, what if you're saying, I don't want my face to be on camera and I don't even want to film anything. I just want to create an AI image and use that as footage in my video. Can you do that? The answer is yes. Let's create a scene with a snowy log cabin under a mountain. Oh baby, that looks good. But if you really look at the detail of this image, it's more painterly than anything. Even though I tried my best to really make it look photorealistic, it's still got that AI painterly quality. Well, that's okay because I can actually make it feel real in less than seven minutes and for you, it's only gonna be 15 seconds. Ready? Place it in Premiere Pro and add a cloud reveal overlay, add some close-ups of snow over top, add some blurred out snow for some depth, add an adjustment layer to make it go from blown out white to normal color, and then finally add a slow zoom to give it the impression that we're actually going through the clouds and tracking forwards with the camera, add a little film grain over top so that it makes it feel like we were actually filming the static image, and then the icing on the cake is add some blizzard sound effects and this appropriate sounding score underneath, and the result is that we have this. perfectly good establishing shot that at first glance actually could work. And guys, that took me literally less than 10 minutes. So think about what you could do with even more time. But for this final one, maybe you're thinking, okay, no tricks. I truly want a blended mesh of AI and real world footage. So how about instead of compositing AI into our real footage, we composite real footage into AI. What do you think a soccer match on the moon would look like? I personally really like top-down perspective shots that you can get with a drone, so I'm just gonna grab this piece of footage here of a soccer match being filmed from a top-down perspective, and you're just gonna take that footage and then you're gonna place it into your editing software and export a single frame. Bring this frame into a program like Photoshop where you can scale it down compared to the canvas size and export it with a transparent background. Why are we doing this? Well, because if you upload this to Dolly 2, you can actually create an AI image out of the surrounding space. Normally what they do is they have an eraser tool where you can cut out all the stuff that you wanted to replace stuff with. But if you just upload an image with a transparent background, it recognizes that and it'll fill in all of that space around it. So if I tell it that what I wanna see is a soccer match being played on the moon with a lot of craters, it actually produces a result that looks just like that. Now here's the kicker. Download that image and rinse and repeat the process. Scale it down, export with a transparent background, generate more images around it, and then repeat. And what you end up with is a sequence of photos that's slowly going farther and farther away from the original image. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you'll know that our best performing video was actually based on this effect, making it look like a camera was zooming in from outer space in order to land on a shot of me on a dock. And we have a full length tutorial covering that entire step-by-step -step process to get that effect. But the short version here for right now is line up all of these images as close in size as possible so that they basically mesh together. Then in After Effects, add a null layer and parent all of the images to this null layer. And then when you scale up and down with the null layer, you're actually just zooming in and out of this massive scene you've created. But the scale's not gonna be linear. It's gonna have this weird jump to the very end. So the solution is to set a keyframe for the start and the end of your zoom with the scale of the null layer. And then highlight both of these keyframes, choose keyframe assistant, exponential scale. And with that, we've created an AI scene of soccer being played in outer space. Guys, I really hope this video has been able to help you to see all the ways that you can use AI to enhance your videos. And I'm gonna add in the description all the footage, templates, overlays, sound effects, and music that I used in this video. Because honestly, everything that you need to create amazing videos is over at motionarray.com. I know I'm totally biased, but they've got literally more than like a million different assets that you can use to make your videos 
just that much more awesome. So please just go check it out through the links in the description below. I would be forever grateful. I know it's a bit of a taboo, scary thing sometimes when we talk about AI jumping into the creative world, because a lot of people think that it's going to replace artists and it's going to ruin the industry. And look, there's anything could happen. There's a chance, but I can't help but think that the evolution that's happening with AI imaging is similar to the evolution that happened between painting and photography. I'm pretty sure that when photography was starting to become a thing, all the painters were upset that the photographers were cheating and it didn't actually take artistic expression to be able to create an image. The camera was doing it all for you. And I'm, I'm kind of joking, but at the same time, I'm kind of not because what happened is that another tool that was created ended up being an opportunity for an exploration into a new realm of creativity. And while the world has changed a little bit since then, it's not like painting doesn't exist. So maybe this is a call to utilize new technology as an opportunity to creatively explore what you can use it for. Because I honestly think that for the average entry level creator, this technology is going to do wonders. And here at Motionary, we're along for the ride and we want to help you make the best videos that you possibly can. So if any of the tools that I used today were of interest to you, please check out the links in the description down below. Have a fantastic day and I can't wait to see all the amazing things that you're going to create.